Um, because I am here in the Czech Republic on, on my way to back to Israel in three weeks, um, if the COVID permits, I'm going to um, read a poem that sort of bridges the two. This book, City of Sky Papers, is structured around dailiness and time. This book is really about different kinds of time. And it started with daily running in the park, daily bike rides, daily bus rides to work. Um, and I also have a community garden. I grew up on a rice farm in Texas and I really like to feel connected to the earth. So the various sections are different kinds of time. Um, and the first section starts with to get here today. And that was sort of my daily, daily uh, title. To get here today, a piano. To get here today, I pulled leggings on and a dress, made oatmeal and coffee, cut fruit, then walked back and forth between a book bag in the living room into which I had knotted two amulets against suicide for someone I love. A flat stone Carl drilled a hole into before he died, having lived in the school janitorial closet in lieu of a nice monastery cell because of the communist government, which I'd found escorting 40 Czech children up and down the coast of Spain. And a black round of coral my ex-boyfriend's mother had given me after she lost her other son. And I walked round to the bus with him in the gargantuan Norton Anthology of American Literature, smaller seventh edition, because I'm teaching Fitzgerald in a dream of a common language, because I couldn't seem to find my Audre Lord, And I wanted to send her something beautiful and surviving, not something that dwelt only on the pain, but that explored a way out. Someone who knew, well, to kill oneself doesn't require, though a disaster, what pain can do. No books composed by suicides, no Deborah Diggs, no Paul Salon. To get here, I walked to the bus stop, planning how and when to explain where babies come from, because my child's already asked, and I thought, I'll tell her in the summer because I'm a single mother. To get here today, I lined my eyes with dark sky and filled it in with moss green and in the crease, stone. In the street, I realized my leggings were on inside out. I quartered a kiwi and have a passion fruit, for I love the feel of infinity in the sandy crunch of seeds. And the viscosity of the other's jelly reminds me of the frog eggs we used to find as children in the pond in Texas. We'd slide them into the clawfoot bathtub that sufficed as a cow trough, caress them saying caviar, by which we meant luck and money. The stars that hung over the house in the dark and which I've not had in ages. Today, I rode the number 56 bus down Derek Hashalom to Alif Sadeh. And just past the stop where the soldiers get off, I noticed someone had painted the white wooden slats of his fence black at even intervals, turning his privacy into a piano again. And this next poem is something, is a poem I have never actually read in public before. And it is called um, Shmita, After Shmita Year. Shmita year is Shmita is something that you can only. It's one of the laws of of. It's a Jewish law that only pertains to land if you live in Israel. So it's only one of the laws that you can do if you're living in the state of Israel or the land of Israel, and it means that you just have to leave your land fallow um, once every seven years, and because I have a community garden plot in a garden, I decided to try doing this. So after Shemitah year. So you can, you can actually have everything that's already growing there. You can eat from it, but it's not yours. So you have to allow anybody who wants to eat whatever's growing in your, in your field. And you can't plant new stuff and you can't, um, 
you can't uh, cultivate the land, but you can have whatever's there. Okay, to get here today, we had to get, oh, and it's these, by the way, Diane was talking about the book on hybridity and most of these poems are narrative poems and they're, they're, they're written in forms because I really like the subversive idea of having diary entries or notes or shopping lists in sonnet forms or in uh, heroic couplets or sestinas. And so you might hear this one is heroic couplets and the previous one was a tabarima. After Shemitah year, to get here today, we had to get over Shemitah year in which the land lies fallow once each seven years. The super moons emerging from the celestial fields as well, now rubbing his slow face against the razors of the neighborhood apartment buildings as in children's books. Look, the shadows we'd lost in the Syria dust storm have returned and the sweat that pooled down our vertebrae unrelieved by shade into the smalls of our backs is dried. A crown of birds of paradise is settling right now against the white kitchen curtains I made from cloud white baby sheets when I had the baby instead of this eight-year-old girl. Into the little green boats, their orange sails unfurled, their blue tongues lapping. Outside, more birds rise over the seas of palms and dates crowd red and gold beneath their own green palms, now felled by chainsaws, held by workmen, lifted on mechanical ladders on Hen Boulevard. They're being swept into clusters, clutched in brooms, in the skinny gold fingers of witches. I have two boats from the last date palm municipal trimming on the bookcase. We'd gone then with Riva, Riva to the sea. It was low tide. The Yarkon River was calm. Soon it will be time once more for the olive harvest. Soon these birds, these dates, these olives will be stacked like calendars. Also grapes, pears, fat figs, once we lived near the Shuka Carmel, and now we bike in. Almonds, large and salted, 80 shekels a kilo. Golden raisins, 36 shekels, pistachios, and heirlooms tomatoes. To buy the birds of paradise, we interrupted the argument the seller was having with a friend. They'd made up by the time she'd got my change. We bought passion fruit vines, two per pot and sweet peppers, their leaves always look like that, and took our leave of Dahlia and Adine, and we passed them, and they passed us, and then we passed them, and they passed us. We were on the bike, and they were on the bus. Since it's October, I will bake a lemon poppy seed cake because the wild tree outside keeps trembling, and when she does, constellations fall and fill our home with citrus that none of our neighbors want, and some we slice, and stuff with salt into a jar and pour a thin layer of olive oil to seal like a sunset poured between the surfaces will. Nevertheless, I still feel when my daughter has her crown in her mouth and a song in her and the three guinea pigs whistle and we love each other, love as the choke collar fate can yank. I dream of moving my laundry horse to the garden for the passion fruit to climb. It doesn't scratch and tear the skin like the raspberry bush I left last year without a fence. My neighbors didn't burn me an effigy, although the weeds of Shemitah returned and turned seedy and grew chest high. I've planted asparagus, celery, beets, Brussels sprouts, roses, and lemongrass. Now day's done. I've made the curtains, pickled the lemons, baked the lemon poppy seed cake. I'm watching as time ripens on the vines and limbs along the laundry line, spacious, awaiting the first rain. And I'm going to end with a poem that is featured on, the, <clears throat> on my site, on the Black Lawrence Press site for this book. And it's called When I Sit and When I Stand. 
And this one, I noticed, um, Sam, that you you have a lot of biblical references in your work, and this does this book kind of does too, because one of the other kinds of time it follows is just the Jewish calendar. Um, and so it follows the seasons, the holidays, the agricultural seasons. And this one is from the morning prayer that you say when you wake up. You, it's the Shema, when you sit and when you stand and when you wake and when you walk. And so it's mimicking that rhythm. <clears throat> When I sit and when I stand, when I awake and when I fall asleep, I'm thinking of it. It is a slight pressure on the stomach, the length of a finger. It is the sudden ambiguous movement as if from a field of zinnias, a kingfisher shot out of you before the eye could register it. It might not have been a kingfisher. I might've just imagined it. It could happen at any moment. I might've already missed it. It might not even exist except in thinking about it, which I never do, except when I sit and when I stand, when I wake, before I fall asleep, when I go out along the road, when the chain comes off my bike and I yank it from the gears and lift the rear tire and guide it back on, when I wipe my hands of grease, when I run along the river, when I get home with my dirt streaked legs, while I'm grinding coffee, while I'm waiting for it to boil, while I'm selecting clothespins for the socks and snap them to the line, which will break sooner rather than later. And I say this too will happen sooner rather than later. The laundry line has been repaired with plastic twine with ribbons from boxes of chocolate. When I set the table, when I remove the plates, when the water is running from the tap while waiting for it to grow hot. Otherwise, I'm perfectly still inside my breath, which I send out into the world, which always comes back to me.